Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Gareth Williams and today I would like to demonstrate how OSPF forms neighbour relationships. Certain criteria needs to match to form these relationships. Uh, so these uh, will be the area ID, the hello dead timer, the stuff lag, authentication, MTU and obviously the interfaces will need to be in the same subnet. OSPF does go through states to go uh, to form these relationships. These are the down, attempt, init, two-way, xstart, exchange, loading, and full. This is going to be our network diagram, or our network that we're going to be working on. So we've got area 0, which is a point-to-point, -point, area 134, which is a shared Ethernet segment, and area 156, which is a frame relay network. So I think we'll start on R1 and R2 and go through the list. Um, so we'll have a look here. So yeah, everything has formed a neighbor relationship apart from the frame relay network, but we'll get to that shortly. Um, okay, so let's go into config T. Oh, yeah, I've already configured the uh, interfaces with IP addresses as well as OSPF. Uh, so we'll do a do show run run dash section OSPF and we'll just take this out, oh, I'll do a debug on R2 first, debug IP OSPF ADJ and we'll do a hello as well so I'm going to take this out and we'll just change it to area 10 And we'll see what happens now. So we've got a log message saying there's a mismatch area ID. And R2, let's have a look, mismatch area. So that isn't going to form a relationship. So to sort this out, we just put it back into area 0. And there we have it. Loading done. And it's going through its process for there. Next thing I want to look at is the hello and dead timer. If we do a do show IP OSPF interface, I think it was 0 slash 0. Do show IP OSPF interface. So yeah, it's a point-to-point, -point, the hello and dead timer. To change this, we just go under the interface, we go IP OSPF, hello, OSPF, hello, and we'll change it to uh, 20. So the hello and dead time has changed. The dead time has automatically changed, which is four times the hello. We'll have a look over here on R2 and see what happens. There we go, we've received a hello from R1. Dead received 80, configured 40. Hello received 20, configured 10. So that isn't going to match. We can sort that out by just putting a no in front of it. And we can see that is changed again. We can change the uh, the dead timer. IP OSPF dead. Dead interval. We'll change this to, I don't know, 60. So the dead timer is 60. Let's have a look over here. Dead received 60, configured 40. And the hellos are the same. Receiving 10, configured 10. Um, so we need to change that. I can just put a no in front of it, but I'll just change it to 40. Which will put it back to its default. 
Let's have a look what happens here. And there we go, it's forming this uh, relationship again. Um, so that is that. Now, the next thing is the stub flag. We can't configure uh, stub areas in area zero, so what we'll do is we'll go over to area 134 and we'll see what happens now. Uh, to change this, this needs to go under the OSPF process. Uh, I'll do a debug on R4 and so debug IP OSPF ADJ and hello. So to change this is area what's the area one three four and we'll just put a stub in front of it. I have uh, created a video about um, stub and totally stubby areas. Uh, you can go ahead and check that out. So because we've changed the stub, it's automatically going to force a reset. We'll have a look on R4 and let's see what's happening. Okay, so we've got a mismatched stub. So that isn't going to form a relationship. I'll just put a no in front of that. Again, it's forced the adjacency to reset, and that should all be good now. Let's do a show IP OSPF neighbor. So at the moment, we've got R4 as DR and R3 as the BDR. What I'm going to do, I'm going to force R1 to be the DR for this segment over here. There's no DR. Uh, or BDR election on a point-to-point -point interface on the point-to-point -point segment. So we'll just change that quickly. Uh, this is done under the interface. So it's IP, OSPF, priority. I'll just change it to 100. And what we'll do as well on here, conf, config T. IP OSPF priority and we'll just change that to zero which will stop it from being considered to be elected as DR or BDR config T INTF zero slash zero uh, we'll do that and R3 and R4 are now DR others, which means they're not DRs or BDRs. We have a look on this one here. OSPF label. Okay. So there we have it. Um, so that's okay so far. R2, let's have a look at R2 quickly. No, not R2. R4. Okay, that's in the two way state, but that's okay. Now, do we need to authentication? I'm not going to do authentication because I, again, I've done that on a different video. Let's so look at the MTU. See what happens when we change the MTU. Um, we'll do this on interface zero slash zero. We do do show interface zero slash zero. And we see that the MTU is 1500. So to change this, it's just simply MTU. And we'll do 64. See what happens. Now, I think I'll need to reset the adjacency on this. We'll give it a second and see what happens. I 
I can, yeah, that's right. Okay, we'll clear this. There you go, neighbor R1 has a smaller interface MTU. Okay, so this is one of the things I wanted to show in this video. Um, so, X start. We'll see if that moves from there. Okay, so it looks like it's stuck in X start. Yep. So I'm not sure if that is going to move. Right then. So if we have a misconfigured MTU value on the interface, it won't get past the X start state. So, yep, that doesn't look good, so we'll just change that again. And there we go, we just went straight into full. Now then, let's see what happens when we have a duplicate router ID. Do this on R one S one router ID and we'll change it to two dot two dot two. And we need to do the do clear SPF process. Duplicate router ID detected. to see what happens there if the state does change so it doesn't look like it's going to do anything that's our ethernet segment that's okay Time has expired. On I'll we'll go into that right then. Yeah, it's even telling us in the log. So that is that. Um, We'll have a look at the frame relay network. So let's have a look at R1 do show run dash section OSPF. Now I am advertising the network 156. I have also configured the interfaces. What interface is that? So we've got the frame maps here, and we've got the keyword here, which is broadcast. So that uh, just allows uh, multicast information to go across a non-broadcast network. Um, 
such as frame relay in this case. So uh, it's not going to form a relationship at all. No. And no. To fix this, we actually need the neighbor statement. So let's have a look at this. So neighbor, we need to tell it what the neighbor is, which is uh, 156.5, 1.156.5, and dot six. Now the hello and dead timers on a non-broadcast area network um, are a lot higher. So yeah, it's 30 seconds for the hello and I believe, yes, it'll be 120 for the dead, for the dead timer. Okay, so there we go, so five and six. Six has been elected as the DR, which is over here, which doesn't make much sense for that to be the DR because it's a hub and spoke network and the PVCs are going, uh, the way that this is configured, the way the PVCs are configured. So R6 goes to R1, R5 goes to R1, and there's no direct PVC between R5 and R6. So again, it wouldn't make sense for R6 to be the DR. It makes sense for R1 to be the DR. So we can go under what was the interface? S0 slash one. S0 slash one. IP OSPF priority. OSPF priority. We'll change this to one, two, three. we will stop these interfaces from being elected as the DR and uh, BDR. I just put in the zero there. There we have it. It shows that uh, R1 is the DR. Let's have a look over here. So yeah, these are the DR others. So um, I think that's about it, really. So as a recap, the area ID has to match the hello and dead time. It needs to match the stub flag. Needs to match authentication. Needs to match. Uh, MTU needs to match. The interfaces need to be on the same subnet, which makes sense. If you can't ping the other side, then OSPF isn't going to form at all. And I think that will be about it. Yep. Thank you for watching.